Good day students! Welcome to Teacher Sally YouTube channel. This is Rosalie Custodio, grade 9 science teacher. Matter is composed of atoms. Atoms are made up of subatomic particles, namely protons, neutrons, and electrons. The position of electrons within the atoms play a vital role in the way atoms interact with one another to form compounds. In order to track where all the electrons in an atom are, chemists use notations called electron configuration. This electron configuration is the most stable arrangement in which the electrons have the lowest energy. An example of electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 for neon atom. Do you know how this electron configuration is obtained? You will find out in this video lesson. Today, we're going to talk about electron configuration. At the end of our lesson, you should be able to write the electron configuration of elements and determine the rules in filling up orbitals. Before we proceed to our discussion, let's have a review. In previous lesson, you learned that electron can only stay at certain fixed distances away from the nucleus. This position is called energy levels. Each energy levels contain a certain number of sublevels. Every sublevel has fixed number of atomic orbitals. This atomic orbital is the place where electrons are most probably found. The electrons in the atomic orbital carries a definite amount of energy. Tracking down the location of a given electron in an atom is similar to tracking where a person lives. To find the person, you need to know his complete home address, city, barangay, and house number. This corresponds to energy levels, sublevels, and atomic orbitals in an atom. In this activity, you will complete the tables about energy levels and electrons. You may pause the video to answer this. Now let us answer. As shown in the table, the principal quantum number is always equal to the number of sublevels within the principal energy level. That is, the principal energy level 1 will have one sublevel. Principal energy level 2 will have two sublevels. Principal energy level 3 will have 3 sublevels, and principal energy level 4 will have 4 sublevels. Let us find out more in the next activity. Let's have principal energy levels and sublevels. What is the relationship between electron energy levels and sublevels? Electrons are arranged in principal energy levels, each of which is given a number 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Each subsequent level has more energy than the previous one. Each principal energy level has one or more sublevels which also increase in energy. The first principal energy level has a quantum number of 1 and has one sublevel, the 1s. The second principal energy level has quantum number of 2 and has two sublevels. 2s and 2p. The third principal energy level has quantum number of 3 and has 3 sublevels, the 3s, 3p, and 3d. And the fourth principal energy level has quantum number of 4 and has 4 sublevels, 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. Now take note that the 4s sublevel has less energy than the 3d sublevel. In this activity, what is the order of sublevels in terms of energy? You may pause the video to answer this. Here's the answer. 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 4d, and 4f. If you got it correctly, good job! Now look at the orbital filling diagram of the given element, specifically the oxygen atom. An oxygen atom contains 8 electrons. The 1s orbital has 2 electrons of opposite spin. 
The 2s orbital also has two electrons of opposite spin. Each of the three 2p orbitals has one electron. The remaining electron now pairs with an electron occupying one of the 2p orbitals. To give you a bigger picture, so this is the orbital diagram of oxygen and the electron configuration. So we have 1s2, 2s2, and 2p4. Now, do you see any pattern in the electron configuration and the orbital diagram of the given element or in oxygen atom? And what are these patterns? To find out the answer, let me discuss to you our topic. What makes the electron configuration of an atom stable? Energy and stability play an important role in determining how electrons are configured in an atom. In an atom, electrons and the nucleus interact to make the most stable arrangement possible. Filling of electrons start from the lowest energy level to highest energy level. Now, the ways in which electrons are arranged in various orbitals around the nuclei of atoms are what you call now the electron configurations. The electron configuration of an atom is a shorthand method of writing the location of electrons by sublevel. The sublevel is written followed by a superscript with the number of electrons in the sublevel. Now, if the 2p sublevel contains two electrons, it is written 2p square, wherein 2 here is the energy level, p is the energy sublevel, and the superscript is the number of electrons. The periodic table can be used as guide for electron configurations. The different sections of the periodic table are very important in understanding electron configurations. So there are four blocks in the periodic table, the S block, the P block, the B block, and the F block. The S block of the periodic table contains element in which the highest energy sublevel is S. Group 1A and 2A have S orbital field. Next is the P block of the periodic table contains elements in which the highest energy sublevel is P. Groups 3A to 8A have the P orbital field. Next is the D block. The D block of the periodic table contains elements in which the highest energy sublevel is D. Group 3B to 2B have the D orbital field. And lastly, the F block of the periodic table contains elements in which the highest energy sublevel is F. The lanthanides and octanides series have the F orbital field. The illustration shows the different blocks in the periodic table. So we have here the S block, P block, D block, and the F block. It also shows in what order to write electron configurations. Starting with the 1s1, 1s2, all the way here to 2s1, 2s2. Next is to 2p sublevel, 2p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All the way here to 3s sublevel, 3s1, 3s2. Next is 3p sublevel, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All the way here to 4s sublevel, then 3b, 4p. Next is 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s, 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s, 5f, 6d, and 7p. Now let's have the periodic patterns. Let's take hydrogen as our example. So we have 1s1 as electron configuration of hydrogen. So this is the first period in the periodic table. This one is the S block and this one, the superscript, is the first column of the S block. Period number or row number is the energy level. So this is true for S and the P block. Subtract 1 to know the period number of the elements found in D blocks and subtract 2 to know the period number of the elements found in F blocks. The electrons found in the outermost shell or level is what you call now the valence electrons. In this example, I have here the sulfur atom. The atomic number of sulfur is 16. 
Remember that the atomic number is equal to the number of electrons. So therefore, sulfur has 16 electrons. Its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p4. Now this is the valence electrons, and this one is the core electrons. Valence electrons are those electrons in an atom outside the noble gas core. Valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost principal quantum level. In this case, the outermost principal quantum level is 3. Now the core electrons or the noble gas core, the term core electrons refer to the electrons within the atom which have the same electron configuration as the nearest noble gas of lower atomic number. The core electrons are the inner electrons which are not directly involved in bonding. Now the group number or the column number is equal to the total number of valence electrons. So this is only true for S and P block. Moving on, three rules are used to build the electron configuration. And these are the Oppel principle, Pauli exclusion principle, and the Hans rule. It tells you how to find the electron configuration of atoms. Let's have first the Oppel principle. As part of his work on electron configuration, Niels Bohr developed the Oppel principle which states how electrons occupy sublevels. It follows the mnemonic in filling up the orbital. According to this principle, electrons occupy orbitals of lower energy first. An element's electron configuration can be represented by using energy level diagram or Oppel diagrams. The Oppel principle from the German Oppel meaning building up construction describes a model building method in which an atom is built up progressively adding electrons as electrons are added we assume the most stable shells with respect to the nucleus and the electrons already present in the upbow diagram each box represents an atomic orbital an upbow diagram uses arrows to represent electrons when there are two electrons in an orbital, the electrons are called the electron pair. Electron pairs are shown with arrows pointing in opposite direction. According to the Pauli exclusion principle, two electrons in an orbital will not spin the same way. That is, an Oppel diagram uses arrows pointing in opposite direction. An arrow Pointing up denotes an electron spinning one away and an arrow pointing downwards denotes an electron spinning the other way. If the orbital only has one electron, this electron is called an unpaired electron. The upbow diagram shows the relative energy levels of the various atomic orbitals. Orbitals of greater energy are higher on the diagram. The range of energy levels within a principal energy level can overlap the energy levels of another principal level. Second is Pauli exclusion principle. According to this, an orbital can hold only two electrons and they must have opposite spin. No two electrons in an atom have the same for quantum numbers. It also introduces a property of electrons called spin which has two states, up and down. The spins of electrons in the same orbital must be opposite. For example, one up and one down. A spin diagram shows how the orbitals are filled. Orbitals are represented by squares and electrons by arrows pointing up or down. So this is the spin diagram for magnesium. Having 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 electron configuration. Next is the Hans rule. It states that every orbital in a subshell is singly occupied with one electron before any one orbital is doubly occupied. And all electrons in singly occupied orbitals have the same spin. Three electrons would occupy three orbitals of equal energy as follows. Electrons then occupy each orbital so that their spins are paired with the first electron in the orbital. When two electrons occupy a P sub level, they could either completely fill the same P orbital or have filled two different P orbitals. 
In the diagram, each plan follows the Hans rule, wherein it states that single electrons occupy all empty orbitals within a sublevel before they start to form pairs in orbitals. If your answer is this, you are correct. If two electrons enter the same orbital, there is a repulsion between them due to their negative charges. The most stable configuration is with single electrons in different orbitals. Evidence for Hans rule. Phosphorus has three electrons in its 3p sublevel and sulfur has four. The lower first ionization energy for sulfur is because it has a pair of electrons in one of the 3p orbitals. Mutual repulsion between these two electrons make it easier to remove one of them. Next is diagonal rule. So we have 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f, 5s, 5p, 5d, 5f, 6s, 6p, 6d, 7s, and 7p. Now write the orbitals in SPDF order. Write the same number of orbitals as the energy level. Draw the diagonal lines from the top right to the bottom left. Now to get the correct order, follow the arrows. This is the upper diagram for hydrogen. Next is the upper diagram for helium. Next is the upper diagram for lithium. Next is the upper diagram for beryllium. Followed by upper diagram for boron. Upper diagram for carbon. Apple diagram for nitrogen. The examples detail how to draw an apple diagram. Let's analyze the apple diagram of fluorine. Determine the number of electrons that the atom has. Now fill the s orbital in the first energy level, the 1s orbital with the two electrons. Fill the s orbital in the second energy level, the 2s orbital with the second two electrons. Put one electron in each of the 3p orbitals in the second energy level, the 2p orbitals, and then if there are still electrons remaining, go back and place a second electrons in each of the 2p orbitals to complete the electron pairs. Continue in this way through each of the successive energy levels until all the electrons have been drawn. Now, using the standard notation, the electron configuration of fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. The number and the letter describe the energy level in orbital, and the number above the orbital shows how many electrons are in that orbital.